the National Gallery in Washington, D.C., and we're looking at Edouard Manet's The Railway, which is one of their great canvases. And one of my personal favorites. It's a very difficult painting to read in certain ways. So Well, that's the idea, I think. I think you're absolutely <laughs> right. Because so, there were all these paintings that were easy to read at the Academy. It's still pretty luscious to look at, but it's breaking a hell of a lot of conventions. It is. We can't read it. Presumably, the main subject is facing away from us. We also don't understand what their relationship is. And the spatial construction is very ambiguous. But let's try to set this up a little bit. We're in Paris, and we're just standing outside one of the main train stations in Paris, and we're at an iron grate, looking down, actually, at the train yard. The train yard, yard right. Yeah. Um, and we're on a, a very modern bridge in the middle of a Paris that has recently been rebuilt. We have this young woman and this child that have stopped to look and rest for a moment. The young woman looks up and out at us. There's a puppy in her lap. Mm -hmm. She's interrupted with her finger in a book. Fan is folded up in yeah. her lap. She directly engages us. She She's looked up and we've interrupted her and we're so implicated. What are we in the middle of saying to her? That's right. And she's looking up, almost assessing us. And um, we don't know what our relationship is with her. She has a reason to be there. The child has stopped to look. She's mm -hmm. sat down to rest, perhaps. It is about this interaction which the city had made possible. The Grand Boulevards had opened up. The city became a place that you moved through, as opposed to a series of sort of separate Sm areas. And small neighborhoods. That's right. right. And so there are interactions between people, between, between classes, strangers. between strangers right. that was intensely modern, and Manet is recapturing that beautifully mm -hmm. here, but with also all the ambiguity of the industrial culture that had made this possible. I mean, mm -hmm. the railway, look at the ambiguity that the railway constructs with its steam, with mm -hmm. that cloud that is in some ways really the subject of the painting, yeah. and the really stark contrast between the luminosity of that cloud of steam and the dark bars of the iron fence. Mm -hmm. What I find amazing is the looseness with which everything is painted and how that is also a symbol of the modern world. Well, man is rejecting all the finish. But also the momentary, because to clarify, right. you need something that's fixed that's stable. and permanent. That's right. Right. So, for example, the, the grapes on the ledge over to the right corner spill over, but you don't have a sense of that as a real ledge that exists no. in space that's no. foreshortened no. and comes out towards us. And all that brown paint behind those black bars on the right side almost comes forward in front of the black bars. So that space collapses all of those rules about perspective and, and atmospheric perspective and constructing space and finish. This is a painting that's meant in just about every way to signify the modern and the contemporary. And it really does. Think about what it means to have the primary central figure turned away from us right. completely. Right. So that we cannot see anything but the very edge of her face and right. her cheek. And look at how unfinished. Her arm is really lacks modeling yes. to define it. Nothing is framed. Nothing is in the center. It's the way that we experience the city. It's the way that our eye moves. Where has he put his focus? For a moment it's on the puppy. For a moment it's on the young woman's face. But it's especially on her hat and the fashion of her Hat, yes, it's very right? much about fashion. It is very and about, much about reading that. people in the city That's based right. on what they're wearing, That's reading right. their class. And you know, we still do this. Yeah. It's an intensely modern painting.